thrilled to have the spokesperson for the Faces of Mental Illness Campaign 2015. It's Kendra Fisher, <laughs> who has been there. You've, you've been in the trenches, and now you've broken through into the clouds, and you're able to tell us what your journey has been like. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us My today. My pleasure. When did this all start for you? Take us back. It's at least 10 years, right? Oh, now we're going to age me. Um, I think now that I know a bit more about mental illness and, and mental health, uh, and knowing what is actually disordered behavior, I could go back to my childhood. Really? Um, when it comes down to when I was actually diagnosed, I was right at the end of my teens, early 20s. But uh, I think knowing now um, as much as I do, this is something that could have been identified much earlier. Well, what were you doing as a child that no one really picked up on? Um, I don't know it's so much what I was doing as it was what I was avoiding. Um, and I think uh, I live with... Uh, quite the diagnosis, but anxiety and, and depression being two of the prevalent. Um, and, and I think a lot of my behaviors in terms of the fears I had, they were very abnormal. I, I mean, when most kids were worried about what they were going to wear to their birthday parties, I was petrified my parents were going to die. And I was, I was so scared about, you know, going to bed and not waking up the next morning. And, and just fears that I think children in general shouldn't necessarily be having at the extent that I was having them. And that goes undiagnosed, untreated, and now you're into your late teens and, and you're uh, ready to get on the Olympic team to play hockey. Uh, what happened? Um, I, I fell apart. I, I found out what bottom really looked like. I, I had been working my whole life towards Team Canada, and I, I guess the timing couldn't have been worse. I was actually out at a Team Canada camp in, in Calgary, and leading up to it in the weeks before I'd been to the doctors I had been to the hospitals I'd been in the emergency room I had no idea what was wrong with me I felt like I was having a heart attack I felt like I was gonna faint I couldn't breathe I couldn't swallow um, and and everybody told me I was fine and, and I got out to camp and I just I, I couldn't hide it anymore I, I got to a point where just the effort it took for me to pretend I was good um, was too much and I just I realized that I needed help and I didn't know what help would look like and unfortunately that day I went to Team Canada and I explained to my coaches that something was wrong uh, I wasn't sure what it was I didn't I didn't even have the, the vocabulary to explain to them what what I was feeling um, I just knew I wasn't okay and, and I explained that to them and and that day they asked me if it would help any to know that I'd made Team Canada would it help you if you knew whether or not you were on the team. Yeah, and uh, it, it's certainly the most memorable moment in my life, or one of, um, but uh, it's not because it's something I'd like to remember. The answer was no. It, it didn't matter anymore. I, I couldn't even remember how to breathe. I couldn't get through my days. Well, that may have been the turning point for you, and, and you've made some lovely documentaries about this, so let's watch a little bit of the video that, that talks about where life went from there. got to about the five-year period after my diagnosis and realized that I was kind of going through the motions of existing. I realized I had a choice to make. I could give up, I could accept there was no point, or I could work and, and find out what the point could be and whether or not there was some other life for me living with mental illness. I realized that there wasn't going to be this pill that would make it go away for me. But what there was was a better medication that enabled me to kind of eliminate the extremes. When the severe depression was gone and the severe anxiety was gone, I existed in this place where I could start to learn more. And my psychologist had also suggested I get into yoga. I'm a hockey player, we don't do yoga. But at that point, I was willing to try anything. I started to learn more about the deep breathing and relaxation, meditation and mindfulness. And those skills helped me to cope with my mental illness so much better. So great. That diagnosis must have been a bit of a shocker because it wasn't just one thing. They had a nice grocery list of things that you were dealing with. Yeah, um, and I think one just kind of compounded the other. Anxiety, depression, panic, OCD, agoraphobia. <laughs> um, and I think the diagnosis, first off, it just took me by complete surprise. It made no sense. I, I had scholarship offers to every school I could want to go to. I had friends. I had a great family. I, you know, I, I had the ability to make Team Canada. And I, I got to a point I couldn't even leave my apartment. I couldn't be alone. I had to have somebody sitting right next to me 24-7. And I just, I went back to this 
young version of myself that couldn't function. And it was, I think it took a long time to accept the diagnosis. The video we just saw was flash forwarding ahead by about five years when you finally started to come up with some, uh, develop some really good coping mechanisms. You had medication and then you learned some of these other techniques and, and has that made the difference for you? Um, in general, I mean, I, I like to refer to myself as being in a place of recovery. I'm, uh, I'm never going to be cured. I'm, not, I'm never going to have a life without mental illness. And for me, that recovery has become an entire routine of all of these different school or tools and, and coping mechanisms that I've found along the way. Um, one being medication, but medication being, you know, just kind of that place where it allowed me to balance. And right. then it took the physical activity and nutrition and getting enough sleep and yoga, mindfulness, meditation, a naturopath, watching, you know, just really paying attention to wellness and, and understanding how my body responds, I guess, to stresses and, and my illness. So for the campaign, what do you want people to know? There's just so far to go still. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely honored to have been named one of the faces of mental illness. And I know when they called me and I, I learned more about the campaign, um, it's just this, it's an alliance, a Canadian Alliance of Mental Illness, Mental Health. And they're working to make the changes that need to happen. And we just have a long way to go still. We unfortunately um, ha have really only kind of scratched the surface on the stigma part of it. And the resources just aren't there yet. We don't have a national strategy. We don't have a mandate in place to provide the level of resources to respond to the level of crisis we're in. Well, thankfully, people like you are out there being honest and saying, hey, this is, this is real life. This is what happened to me. Maybe this is your story, too. Let's get together and create awareness and make some changes. Thank you so much. Absolutely. My pleasure. Power to you. Thank you so much. Great. So for more information, uh, C-A-M-I-M-H, is there, a, do we say, is Cam-H? No. Cam-M-M-M-M? They yeah. refer to it as Cammy. I think that yeah. you're, you're missing.